Today on Styring Haven Models, I scan some decals. I play some video games. Oh boy, stickers! I've never been a fan of decals. No matter what techniques I use, clear coats, brands of decals, solvents, and everything else with decals, I always seem to run into something on every build that kills my mojo. Several years ago, I decided I was going to figure out a way to paint most of the markings on my builds to skip all the hassles with decals. In my research, I ran across vinyl cutters, which at the time were still relatively new and mostly being sold to the scrapbooking crafters and not really focused on making masks for modelers. After doing a little research and finding a Black Friday deal, I landed on a vinyl cutter and the rest was history. A short learning curve later, I am now able to paint on most of the larger markings on my builds, and with my growing library of cut files, I have to create less and less new artwork. Instead of trying to create artwork from scratch, I take a shortcut and use the kit decal sheet or other decal sheets I have and scan them into the drawing program that came with my cutter. I can use the decals as a template to help me get the sizing right and to create the artwork. Using a standard printer scanner, I set the scanner to the highest DPI in full color and scan in the decal sheet. To begin, I take measurements of the actual decals I wish to replace with masks and make sure to resize the image to match my measurements. I do this by drawing a rectangle to the measurements and then checking and resizing the scan to match. Now that I have the size right, I can use the image like the stars and bars decal as a guide to create the artwork. I use basic shapes and lines to create a rough outline of the stars and bars. I line up the shapes and lines to all the parts and angles that will make up the insignia. Taking my time, I make sure to get all the angles right and intersect the lines and shapes. This technique works for most markings. The software does have features like freehand and trace outline for more complex decals like nose art. I can only speak to the software that came with my cutter but it is easy to learn and use and works much like a drawing or photo editing program with many of the same tools. If you want to have a go at making your own artwork to see if this is something for you, I have the full unedited video of how I created this Insignia artwork. I have provided links in the description for you to download this exact software for free along with the scanned image of this decal sheet and the full video. You can follow along and create the stars and bars artwork and decide if you want to get a vinyl cutter to make your own masks. As a double check, I print my artwork as a line drawing and line up the printout to the decal sheet using a light source. This will show me if I got the sizing right. I repeat this process for other markings like the W for the tail of my B-17. Using a square and a font I found that mimics World War II lettering, I am able to get a very close approximation for the tail letter. I have provided a link to this font in the description for the World War II lettering. I use a different scan decal image to create masks for the wing bands for this particular aircraft so that I don't have to figure out the angles. Complex or simple markings, you can make this work for you however you want. With all the artwork created, I make copies, more than I will need in case I mess up during application or the cutter damages the masks while cutting, as can happen depending on the artwork and masking medium from time to time. With everything laid out, it's time to load the cutter with the masking sheet and get cutting. For this build, I use Tamiya masking sheets, but I also have Aura 810 vinyl, depending on the type of masking I will be doing. I prefer the Tamiya sheets as it behaves the same as their other masking tape. It conforms better to curves and is thinner than the vinyl. The vinyl does not tear as easy as the Tamiya sheets and is not as sticky but is thicker and does not conform to curves as well. Both have their uses based on the application. When I first got the cutter, I did some test cuts to adjust the settings to reduce damage while cutting and also get good cuts. I was able to save these settings, so now it's just a matter of selecting Tamiya Sheet or Aura 810 Mask and sending the file to the cutter. I have also provided these settings in the description. The cutter comes to life and begins the process, usually taking just a few minutes to cut the masks for a full Tamiya Sheet. One neat feature of the Cameo Cutter is that it can cut up to 2mm sheet styrene, so you can cut parts as well. 
I created fender braces for the Tamiya KV2 tank build I did. Once done cutting, I now have a full sheet of ready to use masks and the artwork to cut more masks for future builds. You can also do generic sheets of masks of varying sizes of markings like insignia, lettering, wing and fuselage bands, and so on. One of the things you have to plan for when creating your masks is the order in which you will paint the markings if it has more than one color. You have to create the mask in such a way that you can stage your work, masking for the first color, then the second, and so on. To place the first step of the stars and bars and the tail marking, I use the Aura 810 vinyl as a carrier to hold the mask in place as I remove the backing paper. The vinyl is translucent so I can see what I am doing as I place the mask. You can also use clear vinyl or frisket film as well, but since I have the A10, that is what I used. I used the wing band masks as a guide to outline the masking tape around it for the first band color. Since the decals I used were not quite long enough, this allows me to still get the right placement and just extend the masking tape to the end of the wings. With the masks placed, I apply additional masking tape to protect the area from overspray. The model is ready for paint, so it's time to go to the paint barn. For the insignia and tail letter, I start with white, as this will be the color of the stars and bars and the W. Also the white is a great base to spray blue over, since blue is a transparent color. It needs a white base so the color shows correctly, and you only need a thin layer of paint. Same goes for red, yellow, and orange. I never use white and black for my models. Those colors are too stark and never look right. Instead, I use an off-white for this stage of the markings. This is yet another advantage of painting markings. You can control color, weathering, and even do things like pre and post shade. I give the paint a few minutes to dry, aided with a hair dryer, and then I hit it with a few mist coats of all-clad clear base. This seals in the paint, making it tough so I can handle and mask over the painted areas for the next stage in the masking process. It's time to demask the first stage and lay down the second stage for the next colors. The process is the same as before, using the translucent carrier film to hold the mask together as it's lined up and stuck in place. Patience and a little practice is all that is needed. Everything is masked up for overspray and we go back to paint and apply the second colors. If you had more colors per markings, you would continue and repeat this process until complete. With everything dry, it's time to see the fruits of our labor. I demask slowly and gently to make sure I do not damage or pull any of the paint. It's always a treat to see the masks come off and reveal a painted marking just like the real thing. I've skipped all the hassles that come with applying decals and I've retained all the fine detail on the model surface. I hope you found this video helpful in considering creating your own masks. The learning curve is not difficult and you can practice with my unedited video first before making a buying decision on a vinyl cutter. Not only can you cut masks, but you can also cut decals using basic color decal sheets if you would rather just create your own decals. I provided links in the description of all the products used in this video. There are several options for vinyl cutters at different price ranges so you can choose the right one for your budget and needs. If you click any of the links and make a purchase, I get paid a small commission from the seller at no cost to you, so thank you for supporting my channel. Please comment on this video with any tips, questions, and your experiences on cutting your own masks. I love seeing modelers of all stripes help each other become better at the hobby. Be sure to check out some of my other how-to videos including filling gaps and seams, natural metal finish, and painting checkers. Subscribe to my email newsletter where I share tips and tricks, my newest content, and special deals on kits and supplies. You can find the link in the description. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notify bell so you are kept up to date of all my newest content. Hit the like button while you're at it. Thanks for watching.